Hi, I'm Dee, and I'll be presenting on quantum distributed algorithms for detection of clicks. So let's start with a quick two-minute overview about what it is that we do. We tackle subgraph existence problems. In these settings, we're given some large input graph and a small subgraph, for example, triangle, and we're asked to do one of three things. The first is detection to find if the sub small subgraph exists anywhere in the input graph. The second is counting, to give an exact number of the number of times that the subgraph appears in, in the input graph. And the final and most complicated version is listing, to find actually all these instances. In the distributed setting, the way this is defined, every single node in the every single computation node in the graph outputs some list of instances of the subgraph that it sees in the input graph. And it's required that the union of all these lists is exactly all the instances of the subgraph in the input graph. Our main result in this paper is taking any algorithm for listing clicks of a given size p in the non-distributed, in the non-quantum but distributed setting, and using nested Grover search in order to turn it for an algorithm that detects clicks of larger sizes in the quantum distributed setting. Some interesting property that comes up as we do this is that there is a key distributed set, uh, property, which is that we pay only for communication costs, and this allows us to reuse data between Grover searches which makes the nested Grover searches very efficient. And so in a general perspective, there's a very nice usage direction here, which shows that nested Grover searches are very, very applicable to the distributed setting due to an inherent property of the distributed models that we use. The second interesting thing that we show is that we wrap up this nested Grover searches as some black box. And so that no further quantum knowledge is required by anyone wanting to use this black box. And this we hope will be able to make the entire distributed community more accessible to using these quantum techniques. As an example of what we show, for example, we take an algorithm for listing triangles, and that takes n to the one over three rounds in the non-quantum setting, and we turn it into an algorithm for detecting clicks of size four in the same round complexity in the quantum distributed setting. In general, we show the following result, where the blue line shows the, the round complexity required for listing in the non-quantum setting, and the red line shows the runtime that our algorithms take for detection in the quantum setting. In general, this gap that we show here also is a separation since the lower bound for listing is exactly the same also in the quantum setting. And so what we get here is that in the quantum setting, in the quantum distributed setting, we have a separation between listing clicks of a given size and just detecting them. And it's noteworthy that such separation is not known to exist in the non-quantum non setting. Okay, so that was the quick overview. Let's get into the details right now. So distributed subgraph existence. We need to work first in a distributed model. And the model that we use is the congested click. In the congested click, we're given some input graph where every single node has an ID between one and n. And every node is aware at the start, every node is a computation device by itself. And as its input just gets its, neighbor, its neighboring edges. Additionally, we have an overlay graph. And this graph allows the nodes to communicate. In the model, every single two nodes can send a message to one another every single round. And so to formalize this, we have a synchronous network. We have some clock that keeps on going. And so we have rounds of computation. And every single round, two neighboring, any two nodes can send log n bits to one another. And, the and what we try to minimize is the number of rounds it takes in order to solve a problem. We note that the local com computation itself is free, and the only thing that we pay for is the, is the number of rounds it takes for the nodes to communicate. Okay, solving these problems, solving these subgraph uh, existence problems in the congested click has been a, an active research direction for over a decade. First, it was shown, an algorithm was shown for listing clicks of all sizes, and this was matched later on by lower bounds showing that this algorithm is tight. It was later shown that it's possible to use fast matrix multiplication in order to count triangles faster. But it was also shown that showing practically any lower bound for this problem can just click is difficult and would imply lower bounds of circuit complexity. And so there's a huge gap currently open there. Additionally, other results showed how to perform these algorithms faster if the input graph is sparse. In the quantum distributed setting, recent works have been shown that, that, show, that worked in two different models. The first model is the quantum congest model. It's similar to the congested click, just with a, with a slight difference that only two neighboring nodes can communicate with one another. Most of the quantum works were in this setting. It, it, the quantum distributed works were in this setting. Pr primarily, it was shown that for certain types of problems, it's impossible to show any faster algorithm using, the, using, the, using quantum. 
However, it was also shown that exact diameter can, can be computed almost quadratically faster for graphs with low diameter. And it was also shown that triangle detection can be solved much faster in this quantum congest setting. In the quantum congested click, currently the only known result before our work is that exact all pair shortest paths, that is computing the distances in the graph between all nodes, can be done faster than what's known classically. Okay, so let's have a small warm up about how we take algorithms for listing clicks of some size p and turn it using just a single Grover search into an algorithm for detecting clicks of size p plus one. So Grover search was introduced many years ago and on the most basic level it says given some array that we know that has some a binary array that we know that has a bit which is on in one of the in, uh, one of the entries find such an entry in o of n to the one over half uh, into the square root of n round uh, time where n is the length of the array now to formalize this we have some black box function f and we have some domain capital x when we give and and so if if there exists some f so some x x star which f of x star is one then we can find such an x star in the square root of the size of the domain size or reject and say that none exists. This is Grover search, this is very well known. How do we use Grover search in the distributed setting? So recently it was shown that we can do the following. We can basically abstract the black box f as a distributed algorithm. So the way it works is like this. We have some distributed graph and we choose some leader, some arbitrary leader in the graph to lead the, the Grover search. Given some x from the domain, if we give this x to the leader, the leader can run some algorithm that takes c rounds for some value c. In these c rounds, the nodes can uh, uh, talk to one another. And at the end, the leader node knows f of x. And so this is one way to implement the distributed, the, the, a distributed implementation of this black box f. And so if we want to find some x star which satisfies that f of x star is one or to reject, then the leader can do this Using a, using a, by locally simulating a Grover search using c times square root of the domain size rounds of computation. Okay, so assume this is, this is our input graph. We first start by running an, a non-quantum algorithm which lists all clicks of a given size p. So once we run this algorithm, every single click of size p, for example, size four, for example, this orange click, will be known to this purple node. And this is true for every click of size four, it will be known to some node. And every node outputs some list of the clicks that it sees. Now our goal is to try to extend all the clicks of size p that we saw and try to see if there's a click of size p plus one. And so to do this, we start by presenting an algorithm which checks the following. Given some node, for example, this blue node, how can we know if it participates in a click of size p plus one? The way that we do that is, given this node, every single one of its neighbors will broadcast that they neighbor the blue node. Now, in case this blue node does appear in a K5, for example, notice that since we ran a KP listing algorithm, then for example, this click of size four is known to some node, for example, this pink node over here. So once all these four neighbors of the blue node broadcast that they neighbor the blue node, this pink node will be able to say, hey, I found a KP plus one because now it knows that the blue node neighbors all the nodes that it saw in, in, the, in, the, K, in the KP that it saw. Okay, and so we, we show how we can implement this checking algorithm for a specific node in O of one rounds in the congested click. Pretty much every single node just broadcasts if it neighbors or if it doesn't neighbor the, the selected node. And so it even just takes one round. And once we do that, since the domain size that we're looking at, we need, to, we need to check if any node in the graph appears in some kp plus one. And so the domain size is n, the number of nodes in the graph. And so this quantum search takes n to the one half rounds. To sum it up, we get that if we want to detect clicks of size p plus one, we need to pay the round complexity for listing clicks of size p. And this is a completely classical algorithm, which is already known. And then we add on another n to, uh, square root of n rounds in order to perform this search and increase the, the click size by one for detection. Okay, so now let's take this and generalize it. How do we use nested Grover searches in order to extend by t? That is, for example, to take a, an algorithm for listing clicks of size four and present a detection algorithm for clicks of size six. How do we do that? How do we skip by more than one? Okay, so recall that this is what we had previously. And so what we had was we had a classical setup step 
And then we had a classical checking procedure. And this checking procedure we, we used in a quantum search. What if, instead of the classical checking procedure, we replace the checking procedure with a quantum search? That is, we instead of having the checking procedure just be classical, we have a Grover search there as well. And so what we'll get here is uh, some, some form of nested Grover search, where intuitively we, we pay some non-quantum setup cost, and then we search over some domain, and the search itself also has some non-quantum setup cost, and another search, and so forth. And we see that it works really, really, really great in the distributed setting. And that is because of a, G, a specific property of what we pay for in the distributed model that we talked about. So let's see this. As an example, let's try to extend KP listing to KP plus two detection. We basically need to search over all pairs of nodes and see if some pair of nodes extends a given KP to a KP plus two. Intuitively, we would say, okay, I'll just search over all the pairs, but that would all that that would have to have almost uh, at least linear ground complexity, which is way too much for us. And so we want something that's faster. So what we do is we take this matrix that we have to search over, we have to search over all the pairs of nodes, and we split it up into square root of n sets, and set, uh, horizontally. So basically, we get square root of n matrices, which are square root of n rows times n columns. Okay, and now what we'll do. We'll search over all these square root of n batches to see if any batch has a pair which extends a kp to a kp plus two. So if we denote the cost of searching one batch by c, the number of rounds that we'll take is n to the one over four times c. And that's because we simply have n to the one over two batches. Okay, so now that we have to show is how, what, what is this value c? How long does it take to search a specific batch? Okay, so we're given some batch ai. And we need to search if there is if there are two nodes such that one is an AI and the other is an V, such that these two nodes extend some KP to a KP plus two. We start off by broadcasting the neighbors of AI. Every single node on the graph broadcasts which nodes in AI it neighbors. And this takes the size of AI or number of rounds, and so it takes n to the one half number of rounds. Once we do this, we perform a Grover search over all the nodes and check if there exists a node in AI such that the given node in V extends it, it, it together, together both these nodes extend a KP to a KP plus two. And since every single one, in, in order to implement a check, this check, just every single node in V that we search over just has to broadcast its neighbors. Its neighbors have to broadcast that they neighbor it. And so it takes all of one rounds as we saw before in the KP to KP plus one algorithm. And so all this takes is square root of n number of rounds for the Grover search. And so in total, n to the one over two rounds, we managed to search over a given batch. Basically, we searched, we, we performed classically the broadcast along one dimension, and then performed the quantum search along the other dimension of the matrix. And so when we plug this value in, we see that we can search over all the pairs in n to the three over four rounds. And this is great because before that, we, we took a linear number of rounds, and now we take less than a linear number of rounds. But wait, so why did this work, and what can we... And what, what, what consequences can we take from here on for future work? So the key here was that we reused information between searches over V. Basically, intuitively, we have to search over all given pairs. And so whenever we search over the nodes in V, we don't have to pay an additional setup cost for learning the information from AI. The reason for this is that in the distributed setting, we only care about the, the communication complexity. And so if we perform some communication before we perform the Grover search itself, then the information that the nodes learned in that classical computation, in the classical communication, can be used for free and basically reused throughout the Grover search itself. Okay, in general, we can show, and this is, it becomes rather technical, but we can show how to extend listing of clicks of a given size to detection of clicks of any larger size. And so if we work out the math, for example, we get that if one wants to detect clicks of size 2058, then they should list clicks of size 2048 and then extend by 10. And this would give the, this would give the best round complexity using our algorithms so far. Okay. And so our current algorithms, algorithms improve KP detection for all clicks of size five and up. And that's great. But there's a problem because we didn't improve detection of clicks of size three and four, that is triangles and clicks of size four. And that's because all of our approaches require at least 
square root of n additional rounds for the Grover search. However, listing triangles and K4 takes less than that in the cl classic we already. So what can we do? How can we also improve the result, the known results for triangle detection and K4 detection? The way that we do that is that so far we treated the KP listing algorithm itself as a black box. We just said, well, there needs to be some listing algorithm. And then we'll add after, after we run the listing algorithm, we'll add our Grover searches. Now what we do, we go ahead and we open this black box. We have to show a specific, we have to, to introduce a specific listing algorithm, which then we'll use together with our quantum search. And so as a warm up, we'll just show it for triangles. And so basically in triangles, we have to start by K2 listing and then use a quantum search to extend it to K3. And K2 listing is practically a redistribution of the edges because K2 is just an edge. So let's see how we do this. So the first thing that we do is we take the, the, the graph, we take the nodes in the graph V, and we partition it arbitrarily into n to the 1 over 5 parts. And then we go ahead and create another partition of V, the green partition, into n to the 2 over 5 parts. Notice that these two green partitions are exactly the same. They're just here on the slide for convenience uh, twice. And what will happen now is we'll see that every given node u simply chooses some triplet that is one part from the blue partition and two parts from the green partition. And notice that there are exactly n ways to choose such a triplet. And so every single node in the graph chooses a different triplet. What we do now is we observe the following. The node u learns the edges between the two parts in the green partition that it chose. And the number of edges here is n to the 6 over 5. And so it's possible to show that the, the node u can do this in n to the 1 over 5 rounds. Then node u takes the part that it knows, the, the blue part that it chose, and it divides it into n to the 2 over 5 subparts, which each has n to the 2 over 5 nodes. And then it performs a Grover, and notice that for every single subpart, the number of edges between that subpart and the two green parts, u knows, is at most O of n. And so it's possible for, for node u to check if there exists a triangle involving its two green parts and one of the subparts of the blue part in O of 1 rounds, and then performs a Grover search over all these sub subparts of the blue part. Since they're n to the 2 over 5 subparts, and each can be checked in O of 1 rounds, this takes n to the 1 over 5 rounds quantumly. And so basically, this is the algorithm that we get, rather simple, and it shows how to perform uh, K3 detection in the quantum digits a click in n to the 1 over 5 rounds. Notice that all the nodes in the graph do this in parallel. And so if any node finds some click, some triangle, it basically broadcasts to all the graph, I found a node, and that's when the algorithm halts. In general, we can extend this to clicks of all sizes, not just K3 detection. And basically it's based off by taking the listing algorithm which existed in the click and modifying it a bit to work with our algorithm, with our Grover searches. Later on, we also extend it to, to doing plus T and not just plus one by incorporating the results that we showed before for extending to larger clicks. Finally, this is the result that we get, rather, rather complicated in terms of, uh, of plugging in the values, but it improves uh, KP detection for all values of P in the quantum distributed setting. To summarize, we show the first nested Grover search in the distributed setting for taking listing algorithms of a given size in the classical distributed setting and turning them into detection algorithms for clicks of larger sizes in the quantum distributed setting. The key reason why this worked, why nesting the Grover searches worked is because information is reused between the searches because we only pay in the distributed setting for communication costs. And so we can communicate some information at the start and then the nodes can reuse this information throughout a Grover search. And finally, we, the, the final result that we show is we show a separation, an actual gap in the quantum distributed setting for listing and detecting clicks of all sizes. This is unknown currently in the non-quantum setting. Thank you very much. And that's it for today.